Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Looking Good Index DGI, working together towards sustainability for Thailand social sector. Today, we are really excited to have guests joining us virtually and here with us at Thammasat University, Thailand. For our today's sequence, we will start with welcome remarks, followed by Doing Good Index 2022 presentation. Then we will have a token of appreciation session, photo session, and 10 minute break. We will come back again to start a panel discussion, followed by Q&A session and closing remarks. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our staff close to you. For the guests who are joining virtually, please contact us via Zoom chat at any time if you have any questions or difficulties. And now, without further ado, may I now take this opportunity to invite Assistant Professor Dr. Papapon Tiwiyanon Mongkonwanit Dean of the School of Global Study to address our welcome remark. Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Social Development and Human Security of Thailand, Her Excellency Ram Rung Warawat, Dr. Anamote Walsh from the Center of Asian Philanthropy and Society, distinguished panelists and participants, welcome to our seminar today, Doing Good Index, Working together towards sustainability for Thailand's social sector. Philanthropy is about making a difference in our world and using our resources to create positive change. Whether you are an individual, a corporation, or a nonprofit organization, each and every one of us has the power to make a difference and to create a more equitable and just society. Philanthropy in Thailand is subjected to both challenges and opportunities, with many organizations and individuals working to make an impact on society, from supporting education and healthcare initiatives to environmental protection and community development. Philanthropy plays an important role in improving the lives of people in Thailand and addressing the country's pressing social and environmental challenges. Today, we are very honored to have with us Dr. Annalotte Walsh, who will be providing an overview of the Center of Asian Philanthropy and Society's work over the years. We are also very honored to have with us distinguished panelists from various sectors to discuss the challenges and opportunities of philanthropy in Thailand. This discussion is very much substantiated by the work of the Doing Good Index Survey, initiated by the Center of Asian Philanthropy and Society and carried out by Thammasat University and Simeo Seps for Thailand last year. Today's discussion is an opportunity for us to learn from each other, to share our experiences and to explore new and innovative ways under multi-sectorial philanthropy. Indeed, multi-sectorial multi philanthropy can take many forms, including corporate social responsibility initiatives, public-private partnerships, social impact investment, and cross-sector collaborations between nonprofits and businesses. By bringing together diverse perspectives and resources today, multi-sectorial philanthropy represents a shift towards a more collaborative and holistic approach to philanthropy, where the focus is meant to be on finding solutions that benefit all stakeholders and create a positive impact for society as a whole. Finally, whether you are new to philanthropy or have been involved for many years, I believe that you will find something valuable in today's discussions and sessions. Thank you all once again for being here today. Let's move together in making a difference in philanthropy. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Papapon, for your welcome remark. Now may I invite Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Social Development and Human Security, Her Excellency Ram Boom Warwat, to address a welcome remark. Dr. Analog Tewas, Director of Research, uh, Center of ASEAN Philanthropy and Society. Dr. 
ประภาพรจิวยานนนท์มงคลวณิชค่ะดรหนูค่ะ Dean of the School of Global Studies of ธรรมศาสตร์ University Professor สุริชัยวันแก้วค่ะ Director of the Center for Peace and Conflict Studies at จุฬาลงกรณ์ University Distinguished Panelists Ladies and Gentlemen A very good morning and warmest greeting to all of you. On behalf of Ministry of Social Development and Human Security and the Royal Thai Government, I welcome and am thankful for this opportunity to deliver my remarks at the event today. I would like also to express my appreciation to our organizers. In particular, Center of Asian Philanthropy and Society, or CAPS, as well as the School of Global Studies, Thammasat University. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted that we are together here to attend this event and uh, to reaffirm robust partnerships to drive momentum in support social sectors and promote doing good index implementation. I believe that this event uh, will provide you all with the great opportunity to learn and share your views, as well as experience with each other, particularly to widen the impact of doing good index. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may aware that, with our cooperative partnership among relevant stakeholders. Programs and projects on social investment, and carried out by various light departments. For example, Department of Children and Youth supported activities and budget to the Children and Youth Council of Thailand about 2.6 million bars last year. The council is the largest youth network in Thailand, and objectively represents young people's voices to policymakers. Under the purview of Department of Social Development and Welfare, Social Welfare Promotion Fund was established to support social organizations in providing social welfare or performing of work in connection with social welfare provision, which estimated budget 70 million baht per year. In addition, CSO's forum has been held every year so that CSOs can propose policies and implement action plan on civil society organizations, promotion and development. This action plan is a cooperation among government organizations and stakeholders, which is complied with SDG's Goal 17, Partnerships for the Goals. Apart from our ministry, the Revenue Department uh, by Ministry of Finance has taken part of tech measure encouraging the donation for non-profit organizations. Donations can be deducted from annual personal income tax in Thailand. In a nutshell, Thai government encouraged the work of social delivery organization in the form of subsidies, activities, trophies, and certificates. Hopefully, these practices will make positive impact to doing good index of Thailand. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Thai government took an important role in supporting community-based volunteers. More than 1 million village health volunteers and about uh, 98,000 social development and human security volunteers working in villages all over the country are truly heroes in our fight against COVID-19. To support village health, volunteers. The compensation is provided in a series of packages covering health volunteers. Community work from October 2021 for a total of 6.3 billion baht or around 6,000 baht per person. 
ladies and gentlemen, we need to integrate cooperation among the, all stakeholders to achieve sustainability for Thailand's social sector. To conclude, I wish the real firm Thailand readiness to work with our partners on social investment in the social sector. The promotion of doing good index as well as sustainable development goal with the aim of creating people center and resilient a community that leaves no one behind. May I end by wishing our participants productive activity and fruitful outcomes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Excellency Lam Rung Warawat, for your welcome remark. Now may I proceed to a Doing Good Index 2022 presentation session. May I invite Dr. Annalotte Walsh, Director of the Search for CAPS, to give the presentation. Good morning, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Social Development and Human Security, Her Excellency Ramrung Warawat, Assistant Professor Dean Mungkonvanit, Dean of Global Studies, distinguished panelists and guests. Thank you um, for this opportunity to speak here today and to present our report here. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the School of Global Studies for hosting us here today, as well as for their partnership in working with us to help collect the data, as well as um, Kun Sukic, who has been working with us um, for many years on the Doing Good Index and helping us collect this data. And thank you to many of you in the audience today, online and here, as I know that several of you have been involved in collecting the data and completing the survey for us. We know it's a long survey, but hopefully by hearing the presentation today, you will see how important this data is in helping move Thailand forward, as well as for other countries to know what is happening in Thailand. Before turning to the presentation, let me briefly introduce myself and CAPS. My name is Anna Lotta Walsh. I'm, uh, I'm Director of Research um, at the Center for Asian Philanthropy and Society. We are a independent research and advisory organization. We are based in Hong Kong, but we work across 18 countries and economies in Asia. Our mission is to improve both the quantity and quality of private social investments for doing good in Asia. And we do this from the point of view of what works in Asia. Much of the research on philanthropy and CSR originates from the West, but what works in the West does not necessarily work in Asia. We look at the models and strategies from the perspective of Thailand, Korea, China, India, to propose models that can be used in the region. Today, I'd like to talk to you about our flagship report, the Doing Good Index. We launched the 2022 report late last year, and I'd like to share the findings of that. Well, 
sorry. <laughs> Were you able to do manually? Okay, thank you. So the third iteration of the Doing Good Index came about at a very important time as the region was emerging from the COVID pandemic. And we're looking forward in ways that we can adjust and how we want to um, address our social needs. During the pandemic, a lot of things um, changed um, for the good and for the better. One of the things that we really saw was people working together, often in really innovative ways. And I'll talk a bit more about that a bit later on. But COVID also demonstrated the fragility of society. Many, many social and economic inequalities were exacerbated. 120 million people have been pushed into extreme poverty, two thirds of which are estimated to be in South Asia and East Asia. At the same time, while hundreds of people or hundreds and um, thousands of people were struggling to get by, the rich got richer and um, the billionaires of the world increased their wealth by more than 27 percent. This shows not only the need for philanthropy and corporate social responsibility to address these social needs, but also the opportunity of private wealth to be directed in that for those goods, uh, causes. Oh, no way. To solve those problems, we need to work together and we need to do better. How can we work together more effectively and efficiently to help address the social issues the region is suffering? The Doing Good Index shows us a little bit of a way forward. It shows us some of the levers that can be pulled, some of the policies that can really help drive more funding towards social needs. Let me briefly just take a step back and explain what the Doing Good Index is. The Doing Good Index was developed to really understand from a systemic level factors that are enabling or hindering private social investment in Asia. And when I say private social investment, I mean philanthropy, corporate social responsibility, impact investing, any of the ways in which private resources are bringing, being brought to bear for social good. The index covers 18 economies, that's 15 countries plus Hong Kong and, tai um, and Taiwan. Unfortunately, last year, um, and most likely for the next iteration, Myanmar was not able to participate in the index, but we do include Myanmar with a special focus section. One of the things that the Doing Good Index prides itself for is the data. It is based on unique data that we collect ourselves. And this data does not exist for anything else in the region. It is based on two sources of data. One is a survey that is filled out by SDOs, nonprofits. And let me just explain what I mean with SDOs. We introduced this term, it is social delivery organization, because many of the other terms that are used in the region just don't really fit to the audience that we are trying to target. Nonprofits doesn't really work because a lot of organizations that we work actually have a for-profit income stream. Nonprofit doesn't fit either because many organizations in Asia actually work or are directly associated with government. So the term SDO refers to any type of organization, for-profit, non-profit, um, governmental, non-governmental, intergovernmental, and um, that are all working at the front lines to help address social welfare issues. So the data, last year we collected over 2,200 surveys from SDOs across the region. And we also um, have in-depth expert interviews each of our partner organizations in each of the countries help bring together experts 
And this really helps us understand what is is the intricacies of what is happening, um, the laws, the policies, um, and things like that. And we hope um, that maybe some of our esteemed panelists today would be willing to share their wealth of knowledge in our coming panel for the 2024 um, data collection. Now, the Doing Good Index is made up of four sets of indicators. Three of them have to do with government regulations, tax and fiscal policy, and government procurement. The last ecosystem is more about kind of the societal embrace for philanthropy, how companies, communities are um, supporting and embracing social giving. In 2022, we included a special section on COVID. It was the theme for that report. Um, and for the 2024 report, we will be including a section on digital technology, which I can speak a bit more about later. And this is the performance of the economies in 2022. As you can see, there are four um, categories. Thailand is doing okay. Um, it has continued to be in that um, position since 2020. There is in fact a fifth category, which is doing excellent. And it shows that even for economies that are doing well, Singapore, Taiwan, there is still room for improvement to um, to still even do better than that. Now, in the rest of the presentation, I will dive into a bit more specifically on Thailand's performance. But before I do that, I just want to take a little sidestep and talk about the COVID um, impact on the social sector. Now, I don't think it comes as a surprise to anyone if I say that COVID has been tough for everyone and um, also for social sector organizations. It really stretched the capacity of social welfare organizations in the capacity to address social needs. The social and economic needs that economies were facing were too big for governments to deal with um, alone. And they relied heavily on the social organizations to help them address these needs. And this was also the case in Thailand. 43% of surveyed SDOs in Thailand were directly involved with COVID relief efforts. And this work was on top of what they were doing on the regular programming, putting a lot of pressure on their scarce resources. At the same time, funding to the social sector declined. Individuals had less money to give and companies redirected many of their funding towards COVID relief efforts and away from their um, other programs. So this dual kind of um, development put really a lot of pressure on um, the social sector. Yet it's not all doom and gloom. It, in fact, despite all of these challenges, there was a real sense of optimism amongst the SDO respondents. 68% of SDOs said that they feel optimistic about the future of the sector, which is higher than the Asian average of about 56%. And 89% of SDOs feel that the social sector is seen as more important um, due to the pandemic. We suspect because this is they were seen at the front lines and helping people and helping the communities, really increasing kind of the appreciation of their work. Nevertheless, they need help. Now, we asked them what their top needs were. Um, it won't come as a surprise to anyone that funding is at the top. But they were also um, seeking collaborations. And um, as, as the Deputy Permanent Secretary um, indicated already, it, it's important to work together and to collaborate and draw from each other's strengths. And I'll talk a bit more about that later on in the, in the presentation. And finally, there was they are seeking support for digitization and digital literacy. And this is a trend that we're seeing across the region and is also partly informing our theme for our 2024 report um, because there is so much happening in this space. Now let's take a closer look at Thailand's performance. As you can see, the past four years, Thailand has remained in the doing okay index. 
in 2018, it was in fact in the doing better category, um, but dropped. And this was largely due to ecosystem factors. And um, there were um, some um, levels of trust reported among SDOs decreased at the time, and some of the support for capacity building and board prevalence decreased at the time. But hopefully we can, in the future, for the next iteration, see Thailand go up again to doing better. Now let me talk a bit about regulations. Regulations play a very important role in the smooth operation of social sector organizations. They not only help allow them to operate and register, but they also build trust and accountability. At CAPS, we often like to compare regulations with cholesterol. There's good cholesterol and there's bad cholesterol. The good regulations, as I said, allow for smooth operations. They build trust and accountability. Bad regulations, ones that even if they are very well intentioned but are not having the desired effect, can make it a lot more difficult for organizations to operate and add undue burden, administrative burden onto organizations. In Thailand, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, registering a nonprofit is relatively easy compared to other economies in the region. There's only a few clearances required and it, and it takes about three months, but they're difficult to understand. 70% um, of SDOs in Asia said that they find the laws difficult to understand. And there's also a lack of enforcement felt amongst the SDOs. So these are two areas where there can be some improvement, perhaps through consultations with the social sector organizations to help understand why these um, uh, regulations might be difficult and how they might be able to be improved. I mentioned a little bit earlier that the pandemic exacerbated social inequalities and there is a real need for a vibrant and thriving social sector. But a th thriving social sector needs funding. And this, unsurprisingly, is one of the biggest um, challenges facing SDOs. COVID really um, accelerated some of the trends that were already happening before COVID. And one of those trends is the declining foreign funding coming into Thailand, but not just in Thailand, um, across the region. As economies in the region are improving their overall development and graduating into higher economic classes, foreign funding and aid funding is declining and is continuing to decline. And so there's a need to make up that funding um, with domestic funding, individuals, corporate and government. And as you can see, the, both the number of SDOs receiving foreign funding declined as well as the percentage of their budget. Yet, domestic funding has increased as a relative um, proportion of their budget, but it has not been sufficient to make up that funding gap. In fact, more than three quarters of SDOs say that they believe domestic giving is low. And so there is a need to try and incentivize and catalyze domestic giving. How can this be done? One way is through taxes, tax incentives. Now, I know taxes are not the most interesting topic, but they are very important when it comes to unleashing private resources. Firstly, they put money back in the pockets of donors, and who doesn't want that? <laughs> but secondly, they have a very strong signaling effect. In Asia, we're uh, governments and institutions tend to work, um, sorry, institutions tend to work in tandem with government. They listen to the messages that the government is sending and they tend to follow these messages. And tax incentives for charitable giving sends a very strong message of encouragement and support for philanthropic giving. The good news is that Thailand offers 
a tax deduction rate of 100% for both individual and corporate donations. But unlike many other countries, it limits the income and um, profit eligible for these deductions. For individuals, this is 10%, and for corporations, this is 2%. And that's an area where perhaps it can be further incentivized. As, as I mentioned, tax incentives have this signaling effect. And what signal is the government sending by limiting the income that is eligible for this? I indicated earlier about the need for cross-sector collaborations. The SDOs themselves speak about this and indicate the, the need for more. And I think COVID also really um, accelerated this trend. We already saw SDOs working together before, but this really took off during COVID. Almost three, quarter percent, uh, three quarters of SDOs entered into new collaborations during COVID. And in fact, our data shows that most of these collaborations were in fact with government, with national, state, and provincial governments. And in Thailand, this is the highest in Asia. So it shows a real desire and opportunity for the SDO sector to work together with government to help deliver social services. But many times these collaborations during COVID were ad hoc, they were short term, they were spontaneous. And there is a need to look at how these can be made more durable and long term. What might that look like? As I mentioned before, Asia, in government, in Asia, governments loom large. And the economies that tend to do well on the doing good index are those where the government sees the social sector as a partner, not as the enemy or as the, a threat, or, but really as, as partners in trying to achieve the same thing. One of the ways in which they um, can, can partner is through direct funding, either through grants or procurement. In Thailand, about 30% of SDOs receive government grants. It only makes about up about 1% of their budget, so there is a bit of room to grow there, but grants are being received by, by the SDOs. However, when it comes to procurement, there is a real room for improvement in Thailand. In fact, Thailand is one of the lowest performance performers on the procurement sub-index. Only 12% of SDOs in Thailand receive procurement co contracts or income from procurement contracts. Government procurement is really a win-win for everyone. Uh, the government can benefit from the skills and expertise on the ground from the social orga uh, delivery organizations and their support can help legitimize them and help them grow. And for the SDOs, it provides a reliable income stream. Yep. The process that is currently in place is considered difficult and not always transparent. Beyond funding, there's also a need for dialogue together with um, SDOs and the government to help understand what really is needed on the ground. SDOs can help government identify more effective policies and help tipping the balance of regulations in the right way and avoiding um, them being too burdensome or complicated. In Asia or in Thailand, on, um, only 43, or not only, 43% of SDOs say they were never involved with um, any government consultation, which is quite high compared to other economies. And ideally that can be, um, get that, percentage can be lowered. What about companies? There's a real opportunities for companies to do more. Here too, it really is mutually beneficial. Corporate engagement can help build trust. And it can do so by, for, uh, for example, why, when corporate representatives sit on boards or when they volunteer with organizations. Corporate representatives bring with them really valuable skills and knowledge, legal knowledge, 
accounting, IT skills and expertise, business acumen. And these are really important skills that the SDOs themselves can, can benefit from, not only because they might not have the, the their own resources to hire lawyers or accountants, but also to help ensure the, a level of trust um, from kind of a board level. Here, Thailand's doing fairly well. Um, 86% of SDOs have board members with corporate experience and and half host corporate volunteers. Funding too can be an important source of income for SDOs. And we see that this is on the rise, which is, which is great. And we hope to see that a, a, be a trend to continue. A positive development in Thailand, which is helping encourage corporate giving is the requirement for um, listed companies to have ESG reporting and as part of the ESG reporting, reporting on CSR initiatives. Um, it's one of eight economies that has that um, and, and is surely helping boost that in the right direction. Now, I want to talk about one of the challenges that the sector in Thailand is facing. And this is not unique to Thailand. In fact, talent recruitment and retention is a problem across Asia. After funding, it is the most commonly cited challenge. Um, and I'd like to just gauge from you in the in the room, I'd, uh, for those of you who are working with or in SDOs, how many of you struggle with finding or keeping talent within your organization? Well, um, I can say even from our own experience that it is, it's really difficult. Um, corporate careers are always seen as more attractive and better paid. And one of the problems here is that there's this sense that for-profit staff um, need to, be, or not-for-profit staff should be earning less than their for-profit counterparts. It is perfectly fine for executives at corporate companies to re receive high wages and bonuses. But if executives or senior staff or any of staff for that matter at nonprofit organizations are receiving high bonuses or um, good salaries, this is often frowned upon. So people are willing to take and make a sacrifice, often a financial sacrifice to work for, the sec uh, for organizations in the sector because they are so passionate about it. But ensuring adequate pay, professional development, capacity building can really help keep staff and attract them as well. It can also help by including more focus on development within the curriculum at an earlier stage to help create, create that passion for the sector. Now, before I finish, I just wanted to talk about one opportunity, which is the technology opportunity. And um, this is also a feature for our next report. Um, we know that COVID saw a real rise in the use of technology. Many organizations had to move their operations online, um, both in, in their own operations as well as delivering services. But they need help with this. This doesn't always come very easily. Many organizations lack the, the hardware, the software, and the skills to really make that transition and to be able to operate effectively in this new digital world. Um, in fact, 61% of SDOs say that they need help with this process, and it was one of the top three areas of need. So in the upcoming Doing Good Index, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this to really understand where they're at, and what their needs are and how these needs can be addressed by the different sectors. So um, we, for those of you who are willing to take part in the survey again, we would love to hear your thoughts on that and, and watch this space as in next year we'll be, be sharing our findings on that. That brings me to the end of my presentation. If you scan the QR code, you're able to look at more of the data for Thailand and compare the Thailand data with the data from previous years, as well as data from other um, economies um, here at a university setting. I'm sure you guys all appreciate 
data as much as we do and love to crunch the numbers. Um, please do also follow us um, and, and um, we hope to share our next report with you um, next year. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Nalate Walsh, for your presentation. May, may I now proceed to a session for a token of appreciation. May I invite Assistant Professor Dr. Papa Pon Duyanun Mungkonwanit to present a token of appreciation to Deputy Permanent Secretary, Her Excellency Ram Lung Warawat. May I also invite Assistant Professor Papa Pon to present a token of appreciation to Dr. Analote Watch, Director of Research for CAPS. Now may I proceed to a photo session. May I invite Assistant Professor Papa Pon, Deputy and Permanent Secretary, Her Excellency Ram Rung Warawat. Dr. Analote Watch and all panelists to the stage for the photo session. Thank you, everyone. Now I would like to proceed to a 10 minute break. We will come back again at 10.52 to start with a panel discussion. If you prefer, you may take our snack box at the legislation table. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our staff. ที่ก็เจ็บที่ห้องตัวของช่วยอ่าอ๋อครับอ๋อค่ะค่ะอ๋อค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะค่ะค่
ก็ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่อะไรเอ่ยอะไรสแตนบายนะคะให้เจ้าอ๋อแบบสแตนบายเผื่อแบบว่าจะใช่ได้ช่วยแบบว่าได้ได้ใช่ได้ได้เดี๋ยวอีกห้านาทีพี่เริ่มเดี๋ยวขอเล่ามาโอเคให้มันได้พจะส่งง่ายกว่าไหมdiscussion of today's event. We are very honored to have representation of various sectors today. Kun Siri Kun Si Akha is our representative from the Ministry of Social Development and Human Security. He is currently the Director of Policy and Social Measure Development Subdivision, which belongs to the Social Policy and Innovation Development 
Division of the Office of Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Social Development and Human Security. Uh, private sector representation is Kun Sukit Utintu. He was the Vice President of Corporate Social Responsibility for Minor International and also Founder and Vice Chairman of the CSR Club of the Stock Exchange of Thailand, which included 500 corporate members and representatives from 28 companies. His latest position was the founding director of Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization's Regional Center for Sufficiency Economy Philosophy for Sustainability, or Simeo Sets. Professor Suresh Van Gao is Professor Emeritus of Sociology he has worked extensively in the social scene and has directed the Center for Peace and Conflict Studies at Jualongong University since 2010. His other engagement included the chair of Thailand's most, sorry, Thailand's UNESCO most, or Management of Social Transformations Program Committee, and the vice president for Intergovernmental Council of Most for Asia and the Pacific region. His wide ranging research interest includes sustainable development, social movements, and endogenous social theory. Ajahn Dipit Mohun Chai Aranya works extensively with community organization. He is currently the team leader of the Community Empowerment and Innovation for Sustainability Project, CEIS which is jointly established between Electricity Generating Authority of Thailand, Association for Developing Potentials and Giftedness, Institute for Small and Medium Enterprise Development and Thammasat University. He is also the advisor to the Board of Directors for Community Organization Development Institute, or what is known as CODI. Finally, joining us today, Kun Eda Achira Paisan Gun. She founded the Thai Young Philanthropist Network, TYPN, in 2008, an organization which mobilizes local and foreign students and institutions for social investments and skill-based volunteering movement across Thailand and Southeast Asia. Since its inception, they now have 2,700 young leaders and are partnering with more than 100 social purpose organizations. In 2012, Kuneda co-founded THI.com, the first and largest fundraising website for social impact projects, and has led THI.com as the CEO since 2017. Welcome once again, all our distinguished panelists for today. So for the first round of questions, we aim to set the scene and understand what each sector is doing, especially what they are experiencing in regards to Thailand's philanthropy. So to begin, let's start with the public sector. Kun Sri Pongka, as we heard in Dr. Analate's presentation, the government signaling really matters. So we want to know how the Thai government engages with other sectors under philanthropy, the question is, are philanthropy and volunteerism rewarded and encouraged in the form of national programs, such as institutional rec recognition in Thailand? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ajahn Bapapon, for the kind introduction. And uh, I'm really delighted to be here to uh, you know be part of this um, important uh, panel discussion and also you know to join um, other colleagues uh, both uh, in person here in this room and also online in the zoom uh, meeting and um, as this is my actually my first time to be in, in this room you know um, besides the very dynamic river and the Chengdu river and you can see the you know activities you know um, uh, you know out of the the boat uh, cruising uh, back and forth progress uh, so this is, um, you know, to, to say the same as Ajahn uh, no, uh, mentioned, this is the, um, to start, I think, is to see that, uh, you know, the, the dynamism of, uh, you know, um, uh, SEOs, if you like, uh, you know, by sitting in this room. So, you know, um, and um, the tagline in this, um, you know, uh, uh, topic is uh, very crucial. And so I just, um, 
at the bottom line for for our uh, you know uh, uh, future endeavors, I guess, at, because you're working together is the key that uh, we have to um, keep in mind. So so uh, you know in um, uh, oops in trying, in trying to uh, you know answer to the the first um, guiding question as mentioned by uh, Ajahn Prabhupada, I think the the short answer is yes right because but i i will not you know stop there right because as i will probably be mad at me when i by simply saying yes i think there are you know there are for, for the thai um uh, context and the thai situations we have um you know um four or five um you know um enabling uh, factors that i to to like to mention to, to the audience today the first uh, factor is that uh, you know the um the you know giving and also the you know um volunteering is uh you know uh, very um very much the way of life of Thai people and that is the uh, I would say it's uh you know it's embedded in in our DNA already you know because you know as um some of you may be aware that you know the, there are you know currently more than thirteen million volunteers, right? You know, actively engage in you know um, some sort of volunteer work in Thailand. That's roughly one in seven eyes, right? Uh, actively engage in the volunteer work, and uh, also you know the, um, we have uh, you know um, been recognized you know. Uh, internationally and uh, regionally for our, you know, volunteer work as um, uh, mentioned by our deputy permanent secretary this morning already that, um, you know, uh, we is, um, actually received some awards, you know, international awards for our volunteer work and efforts in, in Thailand, and especially during the COVID-19, right? And, um, you know, we often, uh, we have a saying in Thailand that you know our volunteer work um, doesn't uh, discriminate, right? Everyone has a role to play, right? To give uh, something, right? Um, both uh, in cash or in kind, for so for the for for those in need, right? So uh, the first thing is that um, we are, you know, uh, it is uh, our way of life that you know the giving and also volunteering is our you know uh, pretty much in our dna already second uh, factor that i'd like to uh, mention is that we have um uh literally uh, as a will establish uh, ecosystem for for volunteer work and also um uh, sdo's first um uh, factor or element of the ecosystem is that uh, we have the legal uh, framework that uh, you know um, even though we don't have uh, any um, mainstream law you know that, uh, that deals with uh, our philosophy you know especially but we, we have uh, two um, pieces of uh, legislation the first one is the social welfare promotion act of 2003 and also Second uh, law is the Social Enterprise Promotion Act of 2019. These two, um, you know, pieces of legislation, you know, um, play crucial role in uh, promoting and supporting um, SDOs and also SEs in, in Thailand. And um, another element in, in our um, ecosystem is the, you know, policy framework. Of course, we have the you know twenty year you know, national strategy. We have the thirteenth um, you know um, national economic and uh, social um, you know uh, development plan, and also we have um, various um, action plans, right? Um, you know um, within uh, various uh, ministries and and organizations. We have also you know um, cabinet resolutions. You know, on various uh, topics, right? Because, um, for example, the the resolution on uh, you know um, endorsing uh, 
every 31st October to be the, the Thai you know, the Volunteer Day, coinciding with the National Social Work Day, and also the, the one on the uh, announcing uh, the 5th December as an International Volunteer Day, and also the one on, um, you know, um, approving uh, that uh, giving and volunteerism is the, the national agenda. So these are the, just some examples that, that we have the policies that have been uh, put in place that are, you know, um, creating an enabling uh, environment to, to promote and support SEOs. And another um, element or, you know, the aspect that I like to mention is that we have, uh, we have been uh, committed uh, you know, to both uh, global and also regional commitments, right? At the UN level, we have uh, been, um, you know, very much uh, committed to the SDGs, especially um, SDG 17, as mentioned by um, Excellency Liam Rung this morning, and also the, at the, you know, um, uh, ASEAN level, we have been, uh, you know, playing uh, really much um, a past fighting role in, you know, um, initiating some very good um, initiatives. Right? For example, we, we were, uh, you know, in it, we were, you know, very active in uh, uh, starting the GEO Insurer Forum uh, some, some years back. And so um, recently we, you know, initiated the, what we call the, the Oswada Award, which is the stand for the ASEAN Outstanding Social Welfare and Development Awards. Uh, these awards uh, are conferred to, you know, outstanding uh, NGOs or CSOs and also the public, uh, uh, also, sorry, the private sector in ASEAN. So these are, you know, the, the, the recognition and awards that we uh, have been engaged, you know, over the last um, 10 or no, 20 years, right? And, uh, and so I forgot to mention that, you know, with the, the ACGs, right, we are localizing, um, localizing the ACGs. And also we are so um, trying to promote uh, you know, local uh, um, entities, local, uh, you know, um, um, organizations and also the private uh, sector and also um, volunteers, you know, to join forces in uh, utilizing the ACGs in, in Thailand. This is another um, enabling uh, factor that I like to mention. And uh, for the support that the the government, uh, the Thai government, has been um, providing or supporting the STOs or you know volunteers in Thailand, and and I think um, as mentioned by uh, uh, Madam Lebrung this morning already that uh, we provide um, you know both in cash and in kind to to uh, organizations and volunteers for in cash uh, to um, Volunteers, we provide. Uh, we need um, um, a humble uh, compensation. You know, roughly about thirty-two uh, USDs per month uh, compensation to uh, you know uh, health volunteers in uh, throughout Thailand. Uh, roughly, there are um, about um, one million uh, healthcare volunteers uh, working in in Thailand right now, and also. Um, some, you know, um, organizations, right, social welfare organizations in Thailand, they are entitled to, you know, um, financial support or, or grants um, provided by, by the Thai government, by our ministry. So, you know, the, um, from the, the latest uh, figure that I, ha that I have right now, last year we had we provided uh, plans to, um, you know, um, 896 uh, 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 organizations mm -hmm. in, in Thailand that, that they can, um, you know, start uh, their projects or activities uh, for the public good. 
and then and uh, the value of the of the grants um, was more than uh, seventy million baht that, that last year, right? And also for in kind uh, support, we also um, you know um, provide uh, you know um, various um, uh, uh, support, right? Uh, for example, we provide uh, technical support, and then also the um, uh, the capacity building uh, programs for for ACOs and also volunteers, you know, working in in Thailand, and also we, as I mentioned earlier, we you know provide um, uh, rewards and recognitions to both uh, to those um, yeah who um, who do a very um, outstanding contribution to to the Thai society. For example, each year we have. Uh, the outstanding volunteer uh, awards. We have the national volunteer and also NGOs of the year, and also the Vashapati awards that's uh, um, given by our ministry. And also the last uh, uh, factor that I'd like to mention for, for this uh, question is that uh, we have the uh, mechanism in place as well. We have, of course, the um, you know as uh, stipulated by the yeah, Social Promotion Act, we have the Office of the National Commission on Social Welfare uh, uh, the promotion under the Department of uh, Social Welfare, uh, Social Development and Welfare uh, under our ministry. So this is the you know the focal point um, mechanism that you know. Um, uh, spearheads the, the the work and the efforts to promote and support uh, ACOs in Thailand. So um, within our ministry, we have our own uh, volunteer system as well. Right now, we have um, roughly about uh, three hundred thousand volunteers. You know the um, social development and human security volunteers working uh, nationwide. So these are, you know, the you know the eleven uh, factors that uh, contribute to, you know, the the um, good and sound uh, ecosystem in Thailand. And, you know, from from the, from the view of um, our sector, which is the the government sector. So, but the key is that. But uh, having said that, you know, the we are, uh, you know. We have a lot of work to do, right? And the, the, as I mentioned earlier, that the working uh, together is, is a key, you know, as uh, mentioned by, you know, the speakers, uh, previous, previous speakers, speakers, that, you know, um, the COVID-19, you know, has, um, you know, made the, the situations uh, worse for not only the, the ACOs, but also the, Public sector as well, right? Our our budget has been, uh, you know, reduced and you know has been uh, subject uh, to the knife over the over the last uh, two or three years, right? And um, we um uh, tight as well in the in terms of uh, of the of the budgets and also our resources, and um uh, the you know the way forward. I think um for for this the first round, I think. Of course, we have to work together. You know, not only the private, uh, not only the, the private, also the the uh, public sector and also uh, people sector, right? So this could form the PPP partnership that uh, I like to um, you know uh, mention and highlight for for this uh, first round. And uh, thank you very much. Okay, back to you. Thank you very much, Kakun Sri Paul. I think the first step towards working together is in recognizing what each sector is doing. So you've um, mentioned a lot in terms of what the government is doing. And I think, um, you know, it is time for other sectors to also recognize and perhaps connect with with the public sector in this in these endeavors as well. So moving along, um, we're now going to uh, see what the private sector has to share with us. Kunsukitka. In Dr. Analate's um, presentation, we saw that companies have an important role to play in skills transfer. And at the comparative level, does the experience from corporate world 
move to the social organizations, whether it's in fundraising and capacity building. Can you please share in, in these experiences? Thank you. Thank you, Captain Luca. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before talking about uh, private sector, uh, I'm glad to be a friend with CAF for many, many years and doing a lot of things together in philanthropy area. I remember doing Good Index in 2020, we partnership with Ajahn Chitti at the Wayang Pakon School of Development Study running that, that time, that before COVID. And then this time, the Doing Good in Tech 2022, we working with uh, Ajahn Nu and also Semi Osep, our team, Kuntan, and Nong Ei, also the one who collect, help collecting the, the data. Most of my part is interviewing business entrepreneur about, you know, what, what, what do they see about philanthropy in, in the area? So I don't, don't call them. Most of the time, I have lunch or dinner with them. So I can know more about, about their, their attitude, their thinking. What I can tell you is the form of you know, philanthropy in the, in the term of, of business entrepreneur is changed a lot from, from you know, 10 years ago and even longer than that. Uh, they do CSR, right? They do a lot of things about CSR. The most of the things that they do about giving, they call CSR 1.2. Philanthropy, giving, that kind of thing. Now they go to CSR 4.0. It's not about giving anymore. It's about engagement. It's about capacity building. It's about working together. If you want to see my latest book before I retire, it is in Samuel Osep website about uh, sufficiency economy philosophy 5.0 and CSR 5.0. That means how the business sector chain. The latest one, they change instead of working in, you know, donation only, they help SDO, NGO, social worker to do more things, training. When they get things in the community or to help the, the NGO, they set the exit and you know, exit strategy to help them develop, relying on themselves. So they, what they help, they do a kind of marketing, they're doing teaching, marketing, teaching, communication, storytelling, and networking, that, that kind of thing. This is not only giving them, but they learn a lot of things from the working community. Some of the community in, that they're working with begin with giving, but by the end, sometimes it's a value chain. Sometimes some of the, the villager is their supplier, of something. Not only doing that, in, in the company, they have a, a kind of uh, department to do giving only. Another department can set up the corporate foundation. Now you see the big company have corporate foundation that they might have 2% from tax. Give that to that, that foundation and that foundation will help, you know, SEO, NGO, that, that one but the mechanism is the, what you call family foundation, which is the entrepreneur. They want to give what they want to give, but the company, they give in strategy that related to SDG, ESG, they, they have report, they have strategy, but sometimes the owner of the company want to give the thing that they want to give. That's why they set up family foundation, corporate foundation, and the new thing they set up, maybe impact investment fund or SE in the company, instead of, you know, just only using the donation, they generate income, that, that, that kind. So you see many form of a corporate movement in philanthropy that the big company, they have several of that, diversity of that. Some small company, they can use one, one of that. And the Ministry of uh, Social Development help uh, expand and drive CSR to CSR provinces that which many years ago we go together in Rabuli as a, a pilot project. Now at Rabuli now we have 70 something provinces all over Thailand have CSR network. That's why 
CSI and business people don't work alone. They work with business network. Business network working with the government in policy and linkage to the local non-profit organization or social development organization to working together. And that's why you see the form. And I believe that philanthropy in Thailand is deep in, in our, our, our mind. So faith-based organization, temple, we still have a lot of investing. Even we have some scandal news in something that, that pushing back it in some case. Or even the foundation that somehow is a real foundation is a kind of laundry the gray area, the, something that you see in the newspaper, every pushing that back. But trustworthy is, is still a big issue for, for giving. That's why uh, the foundation related to royal patronage, they, they, they perform very good in trustworthy. So a lot of people give. Before I come here this weekend, a lot of my friends in corporate were calling me that they collect all the good things, you know, the good stuff, like the winter clothes to the have Turkey earthquake. I think this morning they will go to to the Turkey uh, uh, embassy. That's that's why this philanthropy and giving is in is in our heart of of Thailand. And corporate is one of the driver through CSR, through SE, through social impact investment fund, something like that, which. I think if you want to learn more of that, I think the corporate people, they have a lot of networks. CSR Club have their stock exchange that begin, and now they are Thailand Business Responsibility Network, which link all the, you know, the giving network together that, that to give you the big picture of the transformation of business sector. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ka Kun Sukeka. Um, We've learned, we've heard from the public and the private sector. Um, a lot is being carried out, but we probably want to move to uh, Ajahn Surishai Wangel, Professor Surishai Wangel, and seek his critical viewpoint of society in a sense at the social level. I mean, you know, what are some of the challenges for philanthropic giving? And do you really feel or see or hear that there is enough social trust within Thai society between sectors to work together in this area? I feel when we talk about the new good, it is too, too narrow to focus on your own country. Too narrow to focus on your own country, to, fo to narrow to focus on yo yourself. Why doing good? Because it's, you see, so instead of being instrumental, that doing good is my PR, myself PR, my company's PR. We live in the world where we are experiencing a lot of PR exercises. I think you could use the word laundry. In our social science research about SDGs and in the world of um, Global Agenda 2030 debates, it's clear that we are faced with uh, more challenging context of the world where the word trust deficit, to follow your, the way you use the word, trust deficit is not only trust deficit, trust diminishing uh, world is the context where we are living in. Is it wrong to say that there are many people who use CSR as a boundary? Not, not all, but some. And that's why we now there are a lot of debates after reflection in the global UN level, the keyword on washing, using the UN as a place to wash the unadaptable business practices, but using UN 
conferences to present your say your corporate or whatever. So I am not uh, skeptical, but it is already a global acknowledgement of a world where trust building is very central to everyone. Trust building is central to everyone. The government always say, doing this and that, we have to work together, yes. But you see, Hun Chiripong said, yes, yes. But you see, I have been appointed by the government to share a committee on promoting uh, law to strengthen civil society from the year 2015. I mean, the year that we started the global agenda. You see, since then, uh, there are four deputy prime ministers who share the big committee. I was a sub sub of that. I, we try very hard. Uh, some people laugh because he bear with me also. But uh, we are not discouraged. But the point is that the language of speaking and the language of action, when you are you have too big a gap, then you have a problem of trust. It's a, everyone can understand this. So what to get to get uh, by vertical command, a vertical together by horizontal spirit, you can understand what I said. You must work together under my command. There is one word. Work together under my command. Sometimes uh, it, it creates problems because the, the, or the people who keep order done does not really understand the needs. And we, we, we cannot be uh, happy about uh, the, the ecology of such policy making. The, the ecology is a very important element to, to talk about this, not only national ecology. I'll talk about the role of uh, caps, which I, I look from afar. I very appreciate, much appreciated. But the fact is that it cannot only support the nationalistic framing of doing good. It needs to base itself in a more humanity-based. People already mentioned Turkey, Syria. Turkey is Syria too difficult to enter. What are we doing with this? Doing good. We cannot just, I think we are very far away from what we would like to do. So having caps with us today, doing good, we cannot be that happy to place ourselves in the box. Why Thailand benefited a lot, for example, the cave boys, the 13 cave boys in Chiang Rai, my, my high school province. We can never solve such a problem without the, the doing good spirit in the world. We cannot say it's a Thai DNA. It's everyone's, it could be everyone's DNA. So I, I, I think we, it is too far behind the reality that we place ourselves without recognizing we are also benefiting a lot, but we have to create a more regionally positive and I uh, could use the word enabling. I uh, fully agree using the enab enabling, but enabling environment to be seen in local, national, and more importantly, regional and global. So, in that sense, I, I can imagine that 13 Kev boys. If we don't appreciate that, we, we, I think we, we have not really learned from the doing good from others during those uh, very critical period. Now, the world it has more disasters and neighboring countries like Myanmar, for example. So there are a lot of things to, so we are, how can we talk about doing good in a more challenging context? I think, I think that indicators are helpful, but it should not serve only self-complacency. It should serve a more critical and also creative. And I end it here. I look for creative ideas. Thank you, Kai Jan. So, Shai, your anecdotes, your analogies of trust setting is very poignant. And I think it begs for us who's working in this area to really um, think harder and rethink our framing of 
philanthropy in Thailand and in this world. So to delve deeper into the sectors that are probably uh, working very much in this field is the community level. Ajahn Jiti. Um, we want to perhaps hear from you because you've been working extensively with community organizations, especially in the flow of funds issue. Can funds flow easily to the social sector in the area, in the in the sector of community organizations that you're working in? Thank you very much, uh, Dean Prabhapan. Uh, Professor Srijai chalked me a piece here. So, my perspective of looking at this uh, doing good index. And, but of course, I agree with him. And I also have some common experiences with him because we were working together in the same committee. A point by the government. Anyway, uh, I, I do not want to speak at that kind of uh, scale, but I try to limit down myself to the uh, sustainability issues at the community level. Okay, let's we give a, a very uh, personal experience. On Saturday, during uh, uh, my, my batchmates organized a reunion activity at uh, one of the uh, club uh, opposite this university, at the Royal, uh, at the Royal Navy Club. Uh, there is 1.5 million baht to donate to Tumasat Hospital. And at the same time, we know that the students in Lampang campus are in need of a kind of a scholarship. Only one lunch, we could collect more than 100,000 baht. And yesterday, I went with my family to one uh, rural temple because I have to follow her. Otherwise, you will get mad since I hardly stay at home. So in some occasion, I cannot walk in myself. She followed one of the men whom uh, our family respects so much. And that nun uh, organized a kind of a religious ceremony and to pay uh, respect to uh, her, her pass away parents and her teachers and so, so forth. Imagine that on that day, there were more than 200 monks which has been invited to have lunch and some donation from the followers of that nun. And look at this our issues. When uh, last night, when I read to uh, Ajahn Operation, whether the funds can flow to the community inside, yes and no. Yeah, it can be through so that the community very, very easily if there is someone who are good in between. Those who have been respected or those who have been trusted by those who can donate. And if these persons bring those uh, channel, those uh, kind of resources to the community, that could be done very, very easily. I think with the community on the trust that the community would be self managed. They are able to manage themselves. They can be more self reliance for their sustainability. So, uh, it seems to me that uh, it is not that easy. You know, philanthropy may not be enough in Thailand. Even though there are a lot of money, a lot of donation has been donated in Thailand. But I'm talking of the 156,280 community organizations. Actually, all in all, we have more than 200. 200 million, uh, 200,000 organizations in Thailand. But those uh, 156,000 something are uh, those organizations who are under supervision of Kobe, where I am a family with. And um, there are about 5,200 community-based welfare funds 
which people themselves donate money to their own organizations. And in the past few years, they try to uh, tap funds from the government as a pop up. Uh, in all, uh, they could save up to 19 billion baht, but they have to spend about two to three billion a year to pay for their social services for their members, which cover from one to Tom. And this is managed by the community themselves. So if we see this kind of figures, we will see that we, of course, we can, we have to think that the government can help them. It would be great if the business sector can do something uh, good for them. But uh, it refers to the fact that it's not sufficient. The people themselves have to be self reliance they have to be more independent and how can they become more independent first of all we uh, from the very beginning you may see that funds will not be easily flown to all communities because there will be a lot of competitions and most of them are not known by the public organizations or the private organizations and secondly we have to see also about the leadership of those community organizations. If they are not strong, if they are not transparent, if they are not uh, uh, dedicated, or if they are not capable to run their own affairs, then the members of the community as a whole will not get any benefit. Usually, uh, there are more. There's a trend that the uh, government and the, the private sector tries to raise more funds from these communities. But what concerns me most is the identity of the community, because as uh, Ajahn Suchai has mentioned that okay, let's work together, but under my command. Most of the government agency have their own ways of spending the money. The plan has been fixed, project has been uh, approved. So the way they spend the money is in accordance with the, the said project and under the rules of uh, the regulations of uh, budget or financing uh, mechanism. It seems to me, it seems to me that the community begin to lose their identity bit by bit. Communities, uh, in my sense, not only means communities in rural area, but also in urban areas. And I also mentioned, I also include the communities of different target groups. For instance, the elders or this, the disabled, and so on and so forth. And I also mentioned of the communities, uh, of uh, the network of communities, which share the same issues of interest. I will consider how to change our definition from CSO to SDO, but I'm afraid that it might not be possible because uh, our committee is uh, assigned to help the NGO, the NGO and the CSO and EOS, which include the business organizations. But anyway, it's good for uh, comparing and studying. All right. Um, I, I agree with Kun Shukri that uh, even though the community are becoming stronger and stronger by learning from their own experience, learning from the neighboring communities, but since the world has been changing very fastly, so communities are in need of some technological or innovative ideas. Someone has to be... Uh, Standing, I have to stay. I have to stand by their side. But those who are standing by their side must understand the wish or the goals or the rules of the communities and try to uh, strengthen them, or empowering them to be able to do everything by themselves in order to uh, reach their sustainability. So I um, wish that uh, with the uh, spirit of working together, but without under my command, 
the real Kara Brothers Center, which help uh, strengthen the community organizations for their sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kara Janjitika. Your, your explanation really break down the rubric of trust, especially at the community level, makes us understand what is it that's going through, you know, just the mere contact of the leadership level as well, and the identity of the community. So now I want to move on to the younger, the more youthful generation who is actually working in this area. Uh, we saw in Dr. Analate's um, presentation that 77% of social delivery organizations believe that the level of domestic funding from individuals and corporates is low. And this has decreased since 2020. Are there incentives enough for individuals and corporations to donate money? And how can individuals and companies be incentivized to do more? This is in your area of work. So um, I, I actually like one of the presentation by Dr. Analete, um, um, when he, uh, she compared different countries and how tax incentives are different. And you can see that in Thailand, let's say compared to Singapore, there are so much room we can improve. And there is also another big problem that uh, might not be included in the presentation yet, is that when we talk about SDO, CSO, or NPO, NGO in Thailand, only... Um, I'm not sure about the latest statistic, but I think um from the last time I checked, less than twenty percent of them are actually um have the tax exemption um tax deduction uh, status. Um, and I used to study about this many years ago that um because um Ministry of of Finance um they are afraid of money laundering, so approving them to have the tax incentive is very challenging, very difficult. So that already like the first barrier for a lot of um private from individual and uh, company um, donation to be channeled into the social sectors. And um second one, so yeah, so for the first one is the tight incentive. There are so much room we can improve. Um just uh, by comparing with our neighbors. And second one, there are also other incentives as well, like a lot of um conversation about ESG, SDG, or the new buzzword. That um actually leads to company they, they care a lot about um all those uh, compliance to different kind of like um new regulation from the regulator in Thailand from the SEC from uh stock exchange of Thailand so that could be another thing that incentivize them um you can look at it in terms of like PR or marketing value or like just like compliance or uh, license to operate in certain area because there are like company as well that uh, intentionally um channel the resources into certain area so that um like so they can get like, um, approval to operate in that certain um area so that that could be second thing and the third thing that um i, I find is quite interesting too is um so uh, um i think it comes with the technology as well so um when looking at individual level even the current tax incentive, um, actually, if you are you earn a lot, and then um, the ten percent cap is actually after you deduct so many um other expenses already, so there are not that much room. But um, with the um the rising um awareness of social justice, so before this, a um when Thai people want to donate, it's very faith based giving. So that's why a lot of um um donation in Thailand, even we estimate that um in uh, I used to look at the statistic by TBRI, so they collect, um, we don't really have that data in Thailand, by the way. So they actually are using different um, numbers and combine together. So I think in um, 2016, the money that Thai people give, um, including CSR budget and individual giving is around like 90, um, 90 billion baht Thai baht. And compare that with uh, Ministry of Social um, Development, the budget in the same year, I think it's around 10 billion baht. So it's actually a lot, a lot of money. This money go, uh, went to temple, so faith-based, um, then hospital, then CSO, NGO, NPO, community organization. So um, because uh, before this, uh, it's um, the culture thing that uh, you mentioned earlier that um, religious giving is part of our culture, right? 
we see a clearly a shift in trend in the past decade that with the technology, so we start to have more exposure about problem that might happen in local community that we might not know of now, but people un, um, know because of the like, the quick response and then um, um the technology part. So I think even like um, in terms of individual social responsibility from what we know of, they tend to look at donation more, not as a tool for like, or religious giving, so that next life or even next year they perform better. They actually look at it as a more like social change tools and look at giving more of the so from the social justice angle rather than like just charitable giving as well. So that could be another angle of how we approach. Um, might not be like economic incentive, but um, in terms of like altruism and responsibility. Like, um, like I wrote as an um. So which I mentioned earlier that um, it's not only the nationalistic or something, but it's actually the humanity value that everyone uh, want to live in that kind of world. So that's clearly the three things I can think of now. But um, if anyone who came with this time is here, um, for instance, it's still a, 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 a very big room we can play. And it can even be much more like corporate giving as well. Thank you very much, Kakun Ada. Um... For round two, I, we want to move forward the conversation and we want to learn about the gaps and opportunities in Thailand's philanthropic scene. We are aware that there are several ways to improve philanthropy, and this includes the promoting the openness and accountability in the sector, and also by encouraging organizations to report on their activities, their outcomes, their impact, and this is really meant to build trust to increase public confidence. Another way is really to provide evidence-based giving, whereby data, research, and best practices are used to inform decisions, as well as encouraging organizations to explore new ways and innovative approaches to giving, such as impact investing and social entrepreneurship. But despite all these mentions, the specific steps to improve philanthropy sector varies depending on the context and the needs of the sector. And it's important to consult with stakeholders. It's important to listen to experts in the field. So to begin this round of discussion, from this round, I perhaps want to start with you, Kun Um, the, the, the data from DGI shows that most social delivery organizations, 54% to be precise, increase the use of digital technology in recent years. How has this use of technology enhanced philanthropic giving in Thai context? Can you tell us what needs to be improved in this area? Um, so um, for me, running a crowdfunding platform, actually in the past three years, it's a big rise in um, in digital or um, giving online. Um, so I... I think there are different um, factors, contributing factors. For one, um, in the past uh, like three or four years, especially during COVID, uh, the pandemic, um, a lot of people start to like not carry cash, right? Because they are afraid of the um, infection or some, something. So people actually use the, so the phone is actually the wallet. And that's why um, everything, the, all the transaction, the uh, purchase, happen on the phone and it's also the same with giving as well so that's why i think a lot of people shift how they give from like um in person um which um like real barrier because of the pandemic to like online giving so that's one and i think the term so some people who already shift they don't shift back but um in thailand actually a lot of people like to you know go to the place see the children take photos um how they do the poetry um PR, personal PR. But anyway, um, so that's one. And second one, actually, when we started uh, PayZai, the crowdfunding platform 10 years ago, we start to see the trend that people ask for um, accountability and transparency in that giving more. And digital platform or digital tool um, actually allow them to like follow up, like learn more about the projects, search for more information, get the feedback, and also follow up um, where that the money that they give go to. So I think that um they will see more rise in terms of like using the digital fundraising, not only in terms of like how they carry their money, but also as a tool for them to do the um transparency check and accountability with the organization that they give money to. Um so that's the second one. And the 
um, what could be the barrier or what could we enhance? So it's actually in your presentation as well when you talk about the need of um, SDO. So uh, funding, I can't remember the second one, capacity building. And the third one is digital, digital digitalization. So I find that one is the big problem, not only in Thailand, it just um, went to Singapore. And it's um, so for the social sector, we take slower pace in digitization because we don't have enough resources. So for example, um, um, during COVID time, there are many organizations that we never worked with before, but uh, want to do digital fundraising because they don't have the um, infrastructure. And building, building their own infrastructure actually take, uh, took a lot, took a lot of like um, initial um, uh, investment uh, in terms of like building all this infrastructure. And also they also need to build how like social capital in the online world, which might be different from like offline world because the, they may have the office people visited them, but they when they want to have an online person and then talk about their work. So it needs time for them to build that reputation and social capital in the uh, in the virtual world as well. So it will take time and even longer time without any support from it could be I think in the Singapore case, um the the government actually support the NPOs, like actually um um spend the budget uh, to hire intermediary to help them speed up the uh, process of like digitize uh, digitalization. And that doesn't only apply to the fundraising like on the donation part, even how they work as well, because a lot of so, so with social delivery um, are slowed down or could not happen during the pandemic. And this, this is not going, going to be the first pandemic. There will be more to come, right? So helping them not only on the fundraising part, but on the um, operation part to bring certain element and uh, operation online would be critical and it can um, speed up with support uh, it could be from the private organization and foundation as well, or even companies, um, if they are really into like, capacity building for the sector. So that's what I see the trend now. Thank you so much. I think that's very poignant in terms of seeing behavioral changes and how that actually has an implicit consequence in the forms of giving. So moving to what you've alluded to in terms of private sector's contribution, I think um, in the larger scheme of things, there are more talks about sustainable development goals and ESGs, you know, environmental, social, corporate governance. I think um, this narr these narratives are actually influencing the way uh, philanthropy is actually uh, moving forward. So I would like to seek your opinion as to how this is happening in Thailand. Has SD, SDG and ESG influenced philanthropic giving, especially for corporates and private sectors? Thank you, uh, Sustainability is, is very important, but when we're talking about sustainability, what is sustainability? Is it sustainability of the company? or the sustainability of the community around them, or what? Most of the company giving a philanthropy focus on their own sustainability. However, their own sustainability have to rely on, you know, their value chain, the, 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 the village or the community they living in, that kind of thing. That's why they have to work together with the, you know, community or issue around them. So SDT, ESG is very important because the company cannot do everything. They have to focus on something very strategic. That's why the deal company really focus on four or five SDG goals that really related to their future sustainability. For, for example, when we uh, 500, at that time, 500, 600 companies of exchange, we do a research. Which of the SDG that we hear from most Two things that come to that research, education and environment. However, the education ranking is going down. Environment is really going down. We do something wrong. That's why we really focus that being only, for example, give scholarship, give something to the school is not working. That's why that is why in one SDG, we change the way we're doing. For example, my company is doing CSR about human development, human, you know, uh, capacity building, that kind of thing. We don't need a lot of money for that. 
and we think we already give tax. You know, the government have a lot of tax for us. In the Ministry of Education, they have 300 billion baht. The, the budget cannot do anything. Why we have to do CSR? That's why we send some people like us to work with the, you know, with the minister in the also level. We are invited to the board of several things, vocational school, a lot of things to change their mindset. However, it's like a pain in the ass of the government. Because you know, we even mean we do have to change this, right? but very difficult, right? Our channel days, they set up committee and that's a committee. But you know, in business, you put into the school and you can change it. Is it that, that kind of thing that government work is is very difficult for company? That's why today that we try to employ SDT into the government, which is very difficult. Now state enterprise already do. Now we try to push it into the government agency. That's why, for example, if you have data and you see what SDT, you will see what company doing that. What kind of uh, government agency doing that? What kind of NGO or SE do? So we map up that kind of data together and we will not, you know, we invest one part of each organization and the result is only one <laughs> only to send or something like that because we are not planning and do strategic so SDT is guideline of strategic working together and we also have a kind of uh i think at Thomas we have SDT move organization that track that go that kind of thing in in uh school of uh development study and uh, going back park on the the uh, school, they have social return on investment. Now the company getting in not only see the return on investment in that project, but the calculate social return. That kind of thing, SDG, ESG, net zero social return is a new trend. Include also the social enterprise, social impact investment fund, something like that. Uh, more impact on the SDT. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kakun Sukika. Mm -hmm. So um, from the private sector, I think, um, you know, we see this this trend, this operational sort of um, uh, transition. And from the community level, Ajahn Jitika, um, I think the basic question, the basic uh, premise here is that what can actually be improved to enhance the community's experience in terms of philanthropy? Well, again, that I would like to uh, refer this term. I would like to relate this term to sustainability. Because otherwise, uh, philanthropy doesn't mean anything for the community. Uh, I, I, I wish that if we can institutionalize uh, the services the efforts from various sectors, including the community sector itself, things will get much better. But to uh, uh, institutionalize the community sector is not easy because it involves uh, a lot of uh, capacity building. It uh, involves a lot of uh, managerial cap uh, capacity building it involves the improvement of transparency and accountability. It involves in, including the leadership and consciousness raising. And again, to institutionalize the communities alone is not enough. As Kunsukit uh, mentioned, to educate or to uh, make the private sectors be aware of what they are doing, whether it is good or bad. That is another thing that uh, we all have to do. I do not want to throw all balls to the government because the government has enough. But again, the government has to do uh, to, to, to improve the tax, taxation system, the uh, procedural uh, approval systems, and the different kind of laws. There are uh, especially two laws that we have been fight for a couple of years. 
uh, the uh, CSO movement try to uh, propose the new bills on the uh, recognition of the CSO itself for years. But just in a sudden, the uh, juridical uh, committee would, uh, just step in and make another law. And uh, they, because they want to try to, uh, to uh, uh, control some of the NGOs, but the laws which has been uh, proposed by this organization uh, will kill every NGOs. You know, they, they want to do something for a, a small group of people, but in return, they burn down the whole, they want to get rid of the rats, but they burn down the whole house. That, that is the kind of laws that the government is uh, doing, uh, is, is uh, now pushing through. And I think we also need to uh, make the society aware we have to educate these people, the, 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 the all sectors that, uh, as Ajahn Suresh I said, doing good is not only for ourselves. It has to be for all. And if all cannot survive, we cannot survive. And we should also encourage more CSR from the business sector because uh, business sector may not be uh, may, may not know who are doing good, which NGO, which CSO are doing good, because they have no no knowledge about that. I think there is one of the mechanism that the government and the all CSO movement have to to do this task. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. I think. Um, much needed areas to which we need to further the discussion in terms of what uh, can be responded by the government also. But um, for this particular round, I think perhaps if I ask our government representative <laughs> to respond in terms of the public sector's view, what can be done to really enhance this philanthropic experience for Thailand? Thank you, thank you very much. I think, um... As we are approaching to lunch, I think it is a, always a challenging time to uh, to talk um, um, before lunch. And um, for for the second uh, question, I think um, um, for my uh, personal view, I think we have, I have um, two uh, you know uh, best uh, sets for you know for, for the future actions, if you like. I think the, for the first uh, short term uh, measures or actions, I think I think uh, for for Thailand, right. We have to um, keep uh, the momentum going, right? We have we have to keep um, the spirit and the volunteer spirit going. We have to keep, um, you know, uh, we have to try to maintain the the volunteer engine, if you like, to be as um, you know uh, functional and also as um, very and uh, energy, if you like, um, as possible. And um, another thing is that we have to, uh, you know, um, uh, put more investment into, uh, you know, the capacity building uh, programs. And also we have to, um, as uh, mentioned by uh, many speakers, we have to embrace uh, the new technology and also, uh, you know, the, the digitalization, right? And also the, the next um, part I'd like to um, mention for the short-term period is that we have to, um, you know, um, from the government sector, we have to put ourselves in the in the shoes of the SDOs, right? That, uh, as um, you know, alluded by um, uh, uh, some speakers, that you know, the, the you know, the we have to um, you know, um, um, somewhat um, shift the paradigm from you know, uh, building a, a threat uh, towards uh, building a partnership as. Um, mentioned by uh, Dr. Anne this morning. And then that's, that's very um, important because um, trust, uh, you know, doesn't um, uh, doesn't happen overnight, right? You have to earn it, right? So that's, um, you know, the, there are, of, of course, there are always um, two sides of the coin, right? So I, I think uh, building uh, trust between, uh, you know, um, all sectors, all players uh, is, is very, um, uh, important to to address uh, for the short term period, 
And also another thing uh, that we mentioned is that uh, we have to, of course, uh, improve the database, right? That uh, it's just always always um, the classic um, dilemma, classic um, uh, challenge for, for the government uh, agencies is that uh, uh, the database, the data is always, um, you know, um, um, belongs to different, uh, you know, agencies that uh, everyone has their own, um, you know, set of database and they don't want to share. That's uh, that's uh, always, um, you know, uh, a very um, challenging uh, scenario for, for us as well. So another uh, short-term um, part uh, to uh, raise is that we have to, you know, uh, encourage all sectors or players, right? And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, working together, right? We have to work together, right? We have to build a uh, partnership, right? And we have to, uh, you know, uh, establish trust, right, between um, all players, right? Because at the end of the day, we, we cannot um, do the job, uh, do the task by ourselves, right? We have even, um, you know, uh, apart from uh, being a government official, I have, um, you know, some, uh, you know, volunteer work as well. So I, I, I totally, uh, you know, you know, understand that uh, the the situations uh, within, uh, you know, our, our society. But uh, I, what, what I can say is that, um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a, in a day, and also the Great Wall of China wasn't built in a day. So, you know, it's a uh, it's a long uh, journey ahead. So that's a uh, and also the the index, you know, is a is a mirror, right? So that uh, we can uh, look upon, and uh, we not only the one one side, one uh, dimension mirror. It is a six uh, dimension, a uh, four actually. Sorry, four dimension uh, mirror, so that you know you can, uh, um, you know, um, uh, look at uh, ourselves, right? That is a. Uh, these are the, the short-term uh, measures, right? For the medium to uh, long-term uh, uh, actions or strategies, I like to um, uh, propose that, you know, uh, we have to um, establish, you know, a national uh, satellite account, right? That's the way to um, address, you know, the, the challenges in terms of the database and also the the you know number or the you know the you know who are uh, who should be uh, you know uh, de um, described as uh, SEOs in Thailand, for example. If we do that, right? If we we have uh, that um, satellite account, right? Um, it will be a game changer for for Thailand to to be at a and uh, entry point, right? Actually, we, we did that uh, once, I think, uh, back in uh, 2000, 2006 with, uh, you know, um, which was uh, the uh, the joint undertaking between various um, agencies, include, including the John Hopkins University. But that was the, the one-off, uh, you know, activity, right? So so we, we should do that more, right? We have to, uh, you know, uh, Establish that, that kind of um, account for for Thailand, right? Uh, with regard to you know uh, ACOs and NGOs in in Thailand, that should be you know on a medium or longer term uh, measure. I think um, another thing is that uh, we have to conduct you know um, reading on from the you know uh, putting ourselves in our, in in that shoes. We, I think we have to um, conduct. Uh, have analysis, you know, of the whole sector, of the whole um, ecosystem in Thailand, right? What are, uh, you know, the things that work? And also, as uh, Dr. Anne mentioned, we have to address both, right? Not only the, the things that work. We have to address the things that don't work as well, right? So, so we have, we can draw the, the lessons to be learned from and also, also uh, good practices and also best, uh, best uh, practices as well. So, um, you know, um, someone, right, have, have, uh, has to, uh, you know, um, you know, um, uh, conduct this exercise, right, in um, assessing the, the depth, uh, you know, 
in in the whole um, ecosystem in the whole sector. That's another um, factor that I like to mention. Next thing is that you know we have to engage the the younger uh, generations. We got that uh, we have one uh, useful uh, speaker. This is one as mentioned by Ajano. I think um, for our generation, right, we are the the first or second wave, right, which will be um, you know uh, uh, you know really soon becoming you know really uh, uh, aging generation. So the new and the younger, the younger generations have to um, you know step up right in, into our society. So um, uh, some uh, somehow right we have to um, you know uh, incorporate and and we sort to uh, try to uh, instill this uh, you know uh, doing good uh, mindset into our uh, you know younger people right. So if we don't do that now right and you know in the future. Um, you know, um, the the sector, like the philosophy uh, sector, is gonna be uh, you know put under more pressure. I would say, right? So another um, uh, point I'd like to make is that you know we have to um, you know um, diversify, right? We have to diversify the the sector and expand the the spectrum, right? And um, as Ajahn Titi has mentioned that, you know, um, there are more than uh, 200,000, uh, you know, uh, community-based organizations in Thailand, right? So that's a lot, right? That's, uh, that's uh, you know, it's um, a real force, right, if you like, right? So uh, how do we empower them, right? How do we, do we uh, you know, um, uh, make them, uh, you know, um, sustainable in their doing, right? So that's another uh, point I like to, to address. And the last one, you know, um, uh, um, regarding the, you know, the law, right? I think we perhaps, I think we have to, um, you know, um, draft, we have to enact, you know, a law, right? Uh, uh, you know, the sector specific uh, law, right? On, on this uh, issue or this sector, right? But the problem is uh, the way do we draft it, right? I think, you know, participation and also, you know, public uh, engagement is is the key, right? Uh, I think I, I like the, the idea of Ajahn, uh, uh, to Ajahn said, you have, you have to do, uh, you know, we have to establish the, the bottom-up approach, right? Rather than the, the top-down uh, approach. This can be the trend, right, for the future. But um, things, um, you know, take time, right, and um, you know, some uh, sometimes, you know, old habits die hard, right. So, so we have to, we have to, uh, you know, be um, realistic with that. And um, but having said that, I think the the uh, the future and the outlook for for Thailand is. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, I'm. I'm uh, uh, Glad to hear that we are doing okay, right? And hope that in the two years' time that we are still in the in the okay um, category and even moving up to the you know you know uh, higher uh, ranking if you like. And I think um as um I the last point I like to uh, um you know uh, mention to this uh, to this uh, meeting is that you know working together right and doing good right and and um. Uh, having listened to uh, the speakers, I think not only doing good, right? We have to um, doing good by you know keeping up to the good governance as well. We have to uh, you know embrace the uh, transparency and also you know the the ethics, you know, and also aware and uh, also the, the mindset. That's very important, right? Uh, you know what we do, right? So. At the end of the day, I think the, for the public good, I think we have to, uh, you know, try force and, um, you know, it, in uh, making our society a better place. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kakun Siriponka. Much, much insights from the public sector. Um, last but not least, but I think we want to finally um, leave with the wise words and thoughts of um, Ajahn Surishai Wangal. At the aggregate level, Ajahn Kai, can we move to uh, doing better 
instead of a doing I, good I, for Thailand? I, definitely, uh, it's not so. I don't feel good to be only okay. <laughs> and to feel better. So this is a very human sense. Huh? But uh, how to move? We need information, but we already saw we need a, a kind of ecology where we can feel that we are moving not to be exploited by certain, uh, you know, specific uh, uh, interests. So the word Kum, Kum Siribong mentioned is public good. Doing good government, yes, company, yes, yourself, yes, but uh, we are interested, I, for me, you know, where is the public? And I think when we are set in search of the public, which is not cannot speak for itself. The public cannot speak for itself. So I think it is very challenging when we talk about trust, uh, undermining trust. Uh, so we are in the world where we feel that uh, many times that this public trust is under threat like now in the geopolitical uh, competition among powers even not only nationally. So we also know that we, we are not dreaming. We have to uh, talk, uh, share our concern. How can we move ahead in the world where trust need to be cultivated? And then also uh, the works that TAPS have presented to us could be an instrument of self-think, you know, reflection as well as to dialogue. And also as well as it is not already made, but we have to find new ways because we are running against the time. Now, let, let me, this is the context of uh, our, our world. It is totally uh, not adequate anymore that we are mentioning our work under SDG. Because SDG is already about, already behind the times. The global meeting in Egypt, so serious, but so difficult to find a conclusion on loss and damage. And there, I think doing good could really be contextualized in such a world. And I think I mean, in many ways, I would like to end uh, relating to this. But after that, there is another meet, global meeting, which is more, more optimistic. That is on biodiversity. There's a Kunming, Montreal, Global Biodiversity uh, Summit. My point here is that uh, it is no more talking about the uh, environment of business. I think Kumsuki is very clear now, company care more. Well, the better company cares beyond ordinary CSR. Means investment care more about profit, but they care more how that profit helps to bring the issue of biodiversity loss into the picture. So the new metrics, the new indicators are not SDG beyond. The SDG is very instrumental, very useful. It helps to bring all these things together that we cannot go beyond uh, the present context if we only stop at, uh, may I mention the word, now we are preparing for election. It, it cannot be only a blame game politics for the future. A blame game politics is far, far, is myself self-serving because politics is some, somewhat like along that line sometimes. But we would like to see politics more for future agenda sitting together, working together. How, how politics allow that kind of uh, space. And I think here we are, I think every side uh, are inadequate for the kind of world we are entering now. And my, my um, uh, in Thailand, I am a, a population category called 706. I mean, people risk population under COVID. 
I'm not 60, eh? 70 plus. So I'm 70 plus six category of vulnerability. So I'm not, uh, I know anytime I can bye bye. Eh? But my point is that the, the way we live for the new generation, and we have not done enough in our time. So I just would like to really feel the sense the longer that we come together that we would like to talk about this doing good in the world where we, the gaps of action and the gaps of words are still big. So how this can make our uh, effort to improve our sector. Today I uh, represent the uh, 7606 category as well as the social sector as well as university, where I feel university has done too little, not inadequate, not adequate enough. So I, I feel like a John and also uh, the director, the, the dean, that uh, global studies, uh, development studies, talking about the kind of uh, benchmark, benchmark uh, issues like uh, doing good in the world where you have a very, very serious crisis a multiple crisis. So going beyond them, sure, but no, and we have to come to the data. And in Thailand, I think until now, there have been a few efforts to do one plan, uh, one one efforts. All these have passed the cabinet resolution with no success. Uh, in between, it has been dropped down, the momentum. So I, f I really feel the issue of data is not ready made. We also have to generate together in some way, and it can be trusted. And at the moment, uh, we do not yet have, we have not had a good, even indicators of key performance index. It's, it has been only recently that the government has agreed to a joint KPI in the cabinet resolution. Until now, Every ministry has their own. So the different data set, different uh, whatever. So the issue of integration in the spirit of uh, SDG, yes, in the spirit of the future, yes. But I think we also need to work with the, the government alone is not, is not accountable enough. The government must be embraced by society and the social sector it's not only a, a small part, but it is a, a, a kind of platform also for the affected people and for the people who also, uh, you know, a pop populace who vote. So in, in some way, I think uh, we, we, I would like to push this uh, for, for forward-looking agenda of uh, politics, uh, opening more space. And I, I feel a support that digitalization is a serious challenge because everyone knows uh, the call center has become a serious issue of crime. Uh, we know uh, serious issues that uh, the 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 uh, or, or, you know, but the, the but we cannot just leave it to the cyber security discussion in the hands of the the state agencies, because the state agency when faced with the big corporate, they also cannot really deal with it. So we need a more international a more global approach to cybersecurity, why we also feel that we, we need uh, really digitalization. So trust is central to all this. Trust is central to this. It's not a national uh, bond, uh, you know, bond doing. Trust our own. You cannot trust a neighboring uh, country or whatever. That kind of politics is belongs to the certain type of politics, but it should not belong to the politics for the future. For the future, which is very unsustainable still, we need really trust. And I am, I am grateful for, for this uh, initiative of uh, discussion that uh, with this, we can uh, see how. And I, I agree with uh, most of Kun Siripong's, except the last point that we need more time because I don't have time. I am joking, but I am serious. I mean, if the speed of learning can be very quick, much quicker. The speed of learning can go by you know, class and uh, grades one, two, three. But uh, now lifelong learning demands that we, we learn faster. And I, I, I am sure 
uh, that can, that could also be be understood. And I think uh, the synergies of learning uh, when we face crisis together, I think that also can be heightened by. So I, I really the spirit of learning could could also be seen that we learn together, collaborative learning. And I think the core. I already agree that the governance issue, governance for the future, is need to be collaborative, and no no other way. The governance for the future need to be collaborative, and a university also need to work together more between disciplines with people who, who in the civil society and others, because we the affected people usually are out of the scene, and how we can be a part of the mediation and also reflection. Uh, I, I I just like to see more budget for the social development uh, and human security ministry uh, while you know the budget are cut because of COVID and then but if you turn around the issue the social sector goes beyond the one ministry it's a interministerial mission it's interministerial mission it's a governmental mission that want to open space for trust building because the government cannot stay on as a command mode. Command mode is no for the future. It's a, a divest, divest, it can be disaster for any any place. So I think uh, the more we, we can uh, share this in the regional uh, level uh, the discussion, I think the UN system also need to be really a place where we uh, this kind of uh, uh, indicators could be a part of such uh, partnership, I mean SDG 17, for whatever points, so that my really last point related. So I just read before I came, there was there is well, there was a very serious uh, uh, debate because uh, in the, between the generation, the government, the one part of the government would like to propose five key values for the Thai nation. Okay, five key values. One among them is gratitude. Okay, gratitude. But the defining gratitude in a familial terms, yes. A gratitude to the people who rule and the ruled, yes. But defining, I, I, I read, I read, and I would like just to mention it. There is a, some people who try to make effort, they use the word, top ten bun kun sing wat long. Paying gratitude to the environment. And they, that's a government ministry. Uh, not not direct, but uh, independent agency. It's it's related to how to re relate to the payment for ecological services, and bring the sense of gratitude to environment, to the companies as well as to to, to the communities. And this already embedded in the culture, but we have lost uh, that that kind of meaningfulness, uh, the context. So I think uh, the crisis make us come back to our own home. I'm not Catholic, but I like the Pope because we cannot uh, do more harm to the home. And no, thank you. Thank you very much, Ajahn Suryashai, Professor Suryashai. You've made us felt the urgency of this particular issue. And I think the collaborative essence that you talk about is really underscoring why we're all sitting here today discussing this issue. I'm very mindful of the time, but I know that um, we want to also give the floor to our participants. Some of you here who do have extensive experience and probably would want to share your opinions and um, comments. Um, Perhaps if I could uh, direct the microphone to Kun Chinchaika. Kun Chinchaika, could you please share us your brief background and your... There we go. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think because of we don't have too much time, then I will present or have commented brief. Uh, first of all, I now I come here. Uh, I represent uh, Thailand National Council on Social Affairs and also Thailand Social Work Profession Council. And I'm a former president of uh, International Council of, of Social Affairs, regional of a service agent in the Pacific. Okay, I want to comment or have a some information. First of all, I think that uh, doing good index is very good. I thank you, uh, thank a lot for perhaps to have a good thing. Why? Because of this is evident based. 
this is the uh, evident based or uh, when when we talk about the government, government want to know. We should want to want to get the or uh, get benefit from something or uh, uh, you must know. And doing good in that is very important. But I want to mention more Kunsilipong because of last 15 years ago, we joined together with an East Beauty or National Council, National Economic and Social uh, Development Board, and John Hopkins and Nida to do. I think it's very important about non-profit satellite account organization and volunteer work. That just means that if government invests or permit private sector or third sector or second sector, then the return at that time 1.6% of GDP of Thailand that we can take it benefit from that sector. But average is not to be 3.5 in Thailand 1.6. That include monks also. <laughs> okay, that's a one point that I want to comment. The second point I think that I agree with Eva, Eva that uh, about tech is very important. Tech deduction, tech exception. Is we have experience, we have a proposal from Missy of Social Management Music to the cabinet, how to deduction uh, or how to uh, exception for first sector and second sector. But if we want to talk this thing, not Ministry of Social Development, you say, you, you do a good thing, a good thing that propose it, but it depends on the tax or revenue office that agree or not or Ministry of Finance. Okay, that's the second point. And the last one, I think that trust is very important. Not for the government that you must trust government, but government must trust every sector. Then for trust, I think that is maybe is that the other words trust for all is very important. And now important when we walk, when we talk about working together, if you have time, you go to Putamanton. I love Putamanton. Because if we go to area Putamanton, it's have many garden. And each garden is less fun by this company, this office, this uh, department, that is thing that if we want to work in together and if we want to have a quality impact, it ought to have a partnership and that ought to have a commitment to do together and get the, set the target to work together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kaka Jin Shaila. Thank you. General, is any other comments or questions in the audience? If not, I think we need to Oh, sorry, Dr. Rosaria, please. Uh, maybe some comments. I think I have worked in this field for quite some time in Thailand. I think uh, one problem with philanthropy is that there are a lot of nuances. So we all mean doing good, but what is good is different for different groups. Now, already here, I think we have a different philosophical uh, approach from uh, self-sufficiency, economy, to social justice, to community development, etc. They all come with different paradigms. So uh, when we say social justice and we say philanthropy for social justice, then we would mean for social change related to human rights, uh, rights of sex worker rights, of migrants rights, of this discriminated population, which may not be the same uh, good value of a corporate or a government institution. So sometimes I think we talk, you know, a different level, we all mean good. So I think it's very important to define, and this is related to Ajahn uh, Surichai, common good. So what is the common good? What is in the interest of the public? What is in the interest of this discriminated a group which may be different from government policy or a corporate. Uh, now the same uh, for uh, corporate social responsibility. There is a lot of talk about corporate social accountability, which is very different from, uh, I mean, this is the PR 
issue. But if it is accountability, then the green washing and the blue washing and all this washing needs to be really examined under a critical look. So I would like to ask really from your experience, uh, it's not only data, but critical look at these giving uh, practices, social impact investment, what we mean, where is the profit from the social investment going? Social enterprise, how much really is for social and how much is for uh, profit? And all these kind of very important questions related to new uh, developments in uh, this field. I wonder whether you are familiar in Thailand with uh, someone who looked at this issue in a more critical uh, way, looking beyond uh, the rhetorics that come with this field. The last point is related to digital uh, philanthropy, because it's very interesting. Uh, when you say a trust, uh, mostly you say you need right, interpersonal trust or organizational trust due to your performance. But often when it is electronic means, people don't know what they are donating. Mm. They are just donating because, oh, I have cancer, I am dying and pop donation. These are the kind of things that get a lot of donations. Not the sustainable development, not uh, social justice causes. Unfortunately, from my perspective, those who get is the one most emotional. So how do you explain the trust factor in this field? Because we have talked a lot about trust, but it seems so with electronic donation is more real. Are you able to move sentiments? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rosalia. Very, very important issues, which I think should be integrated into future dialogues and further dialogues in this field and this area. We, we are not stopping here. We are very thankful for your participation and for the panelists today. I think this needs to be discussed in further details. I think um, CAPS has done a wonderful start, um, wonderful, um, start to instigate, to actually provoke our thinking with the index itself. And I think the discussion here is going to render um, benefits to every part of society, as you've mentioned. And so we're, we're going to be inviting many of the experts in the participants and also the panelists to continue this dialogue further. So if you wish to have more information later on, uh, please check out our website. I will also be reaching out to individuals here. And also please check out CAP's website for the Doing Good Index survey um, updates because they do great work. And I think as uh, Dr. Analate has mentioned today, um, it is a concerted effort coming from every country, giving us the mirror to actually reflect back upon us about what we're doing and if, if, and if it's the right direction that we should be moving towards the global humanities, the global common goods that we all have within us. So thank you so much for today. And um, I per perhaps would want to invite um, the final part of this event is really to uh, say thank you to the panelists. And so we want to present them with a token of appreciation. And then we wish to hope that the participants remain so that we can take a group photo as well. So thank you very much once again for your attendance. Thank you very much. So now we welcome to the closing of our event. May I invite Assistant Professor Dr. Papapon to present a token of appreciation to our panelists. So um, uh, may I invite Kuhn, uh, I got it. Also, Kuhn is also Kuhn uh, Ida to receive a token of appreciation. Uh, and may I receive a token of appreciation. And next, couldn't subject to receive the token of appreciation. Thank 
I think after the solution, we will give you to, to receive the token of appreciation. Uh, as in September, we said that the Mpunchai to receive a token of appreciation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Three, two, three. One, one, two, three. I Um, yeah, I'm